So myself, I'm a surveyor um, and nowadays working in InfraKit, so got a bit away from uh, measuring and poll, but more towards digitalization nowadays. And today, uh, as mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, digital solutions and how the construction projects are nowadays uh, moving more uh, towards uh, BIM and digital workflows, especially uh, in the execution phase. Uh, maybe a little bit about InfraKit um, itself. We were founded 2010 in Finland. And uh, why we were founded was actually based on a research project from a university in Finland together with a construction company and a technology provider. Uh, the reason was uh, back in 2010, BIM was already pretty far in Finland, uh, but they had the problem of bringing the, the models and workflows towards the actual executioner. So I think it's a similar phase where we are currently here in the German-speaking area as well. Uh, everyone talks about BIM, but it often stops uh, after the planning phase and the construction companies um, need to rebuild, uh, redesign all the models uh, in order to use it for machine control, uh, for the execution, getting SBUILD data back. And the research project was basically a concept of a platform that can connect uh, data and information with different people uh, and technology. So we basically connect to technology uh, like Trimble, uh, Leica, Topcon, and others uh, where they're using 3D machine control. Um, I guess you're all aware about 3D machine control, excavators with centimeter accuracy, uh, automatic steering, so we can send the design data directly to the machines, get as built and real-time data back uh, for the project executioner. And uh, I just want to show a quick video uh, on how that looks and explain a bit so you get a feeling of the interface. Could you please play the video? Thank you. So um, basically it's an um, execution CDE platform. It's all online browser based and also for the apps uh, you can uh, uh, basically merge different CAD data, IFC, BIM models, uh, background maps. You can add different uh, WMS uh, pictures or your own auto pictures or point clouds. Uh, and together with the design data, uh, you can have the models and documents and whatever you need uh, all the time in real time, not only in the browser, but in the field. Uh, because I think we are in a transition of 2D or analog towards more 3D and BIM, uh, so we enable also like adding um, PDF documents in the field uh, along with uh, photo documentation. So basically, uh, I would call it a kind of Google Maps for project executioner uh, compared with your own uh, positioner. And uh, you have the overall uh, view of what's happening on your project for documentation, for quality assurance. Um, and of course, you can also see here some machine control systems and as built data coming back. So uh, we can connect as built data with the actual models. That means you see, for example, deviations from as built points coming from the surveyor uh, back to the office in order to see whether everything is uh, as planned. And even though we have nice 3D models, uh, a lot of site managers, foremen, uh, they prefer working with uh, cross sections or long sections. So we also enable that one. Uh, and of course, pretty important, it has to be usable. And if a construction company wants to include an owner or site supervisioner, uh, they can easily uh, also create safe views, basically, uh, to collaborate and share information, also for project meetings. Uh, for example, if something is out of tolerance, to, to show what's happening uh, and make the data usable for everyone. Same with 3D data, whether it's IFC models, point clouds, uh, we merge the data and uh, focus really on the project executioner and uh, connecting our system with other uh, CDE and design tools. So, um, but of course we see a lot of data and here it's uh, fascinating, I would call it, how many drones and mobile scanning and different systems we see. Uh, they are creating a lot of data, uh, but of course we need to extract some information but on, not only the information, uh, but basically the insights uh, of all that information is what we need to make good decisions uh, during the projects. And also those good decisions based on the insights, um, what we have as a problem still today uh, is we have digital silos uh, between uh, office and field. Um, 
and of course also between the owners, construction company, um, and the designers. Uh, and I think in general, I always like to quote Channing here, uh, we are all individuals, we all have our preferred solution, platform, uh, surveying uh, vendor, uh, and I think we need to have open platforms with open APIs to connect the different information in order to get those insights. And now I'm going to show you a project uh, that is currently still being executed. Uh, it's the A9 um, uh, highway uh, project in Austria. It's uh, around nine kilometers um, refurbishment of highway. And I think this, these kind of projects, they're coming more and more uh, in the next couple of years. Um, so bridges, uh, lots of asphalt, uh, and uh, 60 million value. So I'm going to uh, show a little bit how we utilized InfraKit here. Um, so maybe in general, uh, I think there was a, the owner was Asfinac, and it was very interesting uh, because they had a, uh, they call it two envelope um, uh, procedure. So basically the construction companies uh, that applied for the, for the project or uh, were bidding on the tender, uh, they had to, um, they had to bid in the first phase uh, with a, um, digital process on how they want to collaborate with the owners, with the designers, and how they can um, transparently execute uh, the project uh, in a digital execution platform. And in that case, they selected InfraKit uh, in that first phase and also won the tender um, to get the project. So that started um, around two years ago. and. Um, I mean, the, the owner of Asfinac, their plan was uh, really to uh, push more the contractors or construction companies to show innovative solutions and also um, yeah, more advanced technology that helps everyone in terms of collaboration, quality assurance. Uh, and the main focus was to automate the data storage, uh, have a seamless documentation and information exchange. So what Paul was doing here, as you can see in the picture, uh, they were managing all the photo documentation in the field uh, together with real-time access to the data, so all the updates on the design models, um, and of course the 3D machine control. So they also um, had some 3D automated machines uh, connected to InfraKit where the designs were pushed to the machines and as built data uh, was sent back. Uh, and I think the statement from, from Paul uh, here is clear, uh, they want to create transparent workflows uh, with the clients, with partners, and this is a first step and proof of concept uh, that this is actually working. Um, not only as a browser, um, the site managers and foremen, they were also utilizing InfraKit to um, basically have quality check workflows. For example, when the external surveying company uh, was measuring the manholes, uh, the site manager could see in almost real time uh, the deviation of the design compared to uh, the manholes that were built before they were laying the asphalt. Um, so there was also uh, some very good cases because if some elevation don't fit and you start coming with the paving machines and laying the asphalt, you're going to have a costly problem afterwards to, uh, to fix that. Um, yeah, also the site supervision company, in this case, uh, Civil Techniker Thomas Lorenz, uh, they were communicating based on InfraKit uh, with the construction company and all the stakeholders um, and basically the whole project team. So they don't see themselves as classical site supervision to making sure everything is right, but really the, the partner between the owner, the construction company and the designer uh, to enable seamless workflows and collaboration on that project. And last but not least, also the surveying uh, company here. In that case, they were working with Leica, uh, Leica rovers. Uh, the machines were guided with Trimble. Um, we're also utilizing InfraKit and synchronizing all the ESPL data um, with the platform um, uh, so that the con contractor and construction company could manage their billing based on the ESPLs builds on the current situation. Uh, and it was just a very nice project. Uh, it's still ongoing uh, until mid of next year, uh, looking pretty good so far. And so this is just uh, some insights on how it can work. Uh, I think we all need to push on digitalization uh, 
uh, there's still the people behind in the market or in the companies that say, okay, no, we don't want this, it's new. Uh, so it's always very important also for us as a software provider uh, to start with the right company. They need to have the right team. They need to be motivated to adopt new technology. Uh, but once this is adopted, everyone sees the benefits in collaborating and real-time data. And yeah, it's fun pushing the digitalization and I hope also uh, everyone here uh, is looking around, uh, not only in hardware and surveying, but more uh, CDE execution and those kind of interesting topics. Uh, we are here in Hall 3.2, uh, next site, so if you want to have a look or demo, uh, just pop by or drop us an email, and we are happy to set up a project. Our office is in Munich, uh, so headquarters in Finland, but we are working here now in Germany, Austria, Switzerland also. Thanks for coming.